In this screencast video lecture, we will see about the vectors and how they can be controlled in order to reduce the disease spread. Here vectors are living organisms that can be transmitting infectious pathogens between the humans or from animals to the humans. Most of these vectors are basically of a blood sucking insects which can able to ingest the disease producing pathogens during a blood bead from an infected host say for example from an infected human or animal they can be ingesting the pathogen and later it will be transmitted to a new host after the period in which the pathogens will be replicated there inside the vector itself often once a vector become infectious the pathogen can able to stay inside the vector host and they can be transmitted to the other organism throughout their life cycle especially during every subsequent bite or during a blood bead. Next we look at into the details of the vector borne diseases that are commonly caused there in the humans. The vector borne diseases are humans or illness actually caused by certain parasites or viruses and bacteria that are transmitted by these vectors. Every year more than 7 lakh death that have been occurring in the world is mainly due to the following diseases. It includes malaria, dengue, schistosomiasis that is the one which is transmitted by certain snails that are acting as a vector. Then human African tryptnosomiasis, leishmaniasis, Chagos disease, yellow fever, Japanese encephalitis and onchocircosiasis. So these are all the various forms of the vector borne illness that are affecting the humankind. The burden of this disease is highest especially in the tropical and subtropical areas and they are disproportionately affecting mainly the poorest populations. Say since 2014 major outbreaks of the dengue, malaria, chikungunya, yellow fever and zika virus have afflicted on the various populations that have been residing there in the tropical and subtropical areas and they have claimed their lives that is death of the people have resulted and a overwhelmed response have been there caused there on the health system in these following countries also that is coming under tropical and subtropical region. Other diseases such as chikungunya, leishmaniasis, and lymphatic filariasis caused chronic suffering, long term morbidity problems as well as in certain individuals they have caused a lot of disability problems also. Distribution of this vector borne diseases are in turn determined by a complex set of demographic factors, environmental factors and social factors. Global travel, trade and unplanned urbanization were also viewed as a reason for the distribution of these vector borne diseases. Next we look at the list of vector borne diseases that is the name of the disease and their vectors that have been associated with. The first one is uh, mosquitoes. Three different genus of mosquitoes have been playing role as a vector in the spread of the parasitic diseases. First one is the Aedips group of mosquitoes that have been associated there with the spreading of chikungunya, dengue, lymphatic filariasis, rift valley fever, yellow fever and spread of the zika virus. The next one is the Anopheles mosquito which is a classical example for the spread of the malaria disease. Apart from that they were also associated with the lymphatic filariasis. The third one is the Culex group of mosquitoes that are associated with Japanese encephalitis fever, lymphatic filariasis as well as the West Nile fever spread. The next vector is aquatic snails that are involved there in the transmission of the parasitic worms and they cause the type of a parasitic disease called as a schistosomiasis. And then the black flies that are associated there with the river blindness technically referred as a onco Circiasis. Then fleas were associated with transmission of the plague. In turn, they were transmitted to human only through the vector of the rats. Whereas lice have been associated there with the typhus fever, louse bond relapsing fever. Sand flies are associated with 
leishmaniasis transfer and some sand flies have been associated there with the sand fly fever that is also called as a plebotomous fever disease. Ticks were associated with Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, Lyme disease, relapsing fever which is technically referred as a borreliosis and recursial disease say for example the spotted fever and Q fever are commonly transmitted by ticks and ticks born encephalitis and tularemia disease are the group of disease that have been transmitted by ticks. Then triatome bugs are associated with the American Strypnosomiasis, whereas CC flies are associated with the African Strypnosomiasis, which is also referred as a sleeping sickness. Finally, we look at into the methods that have been involved there in the vector control. It is a very important crucial strategy in preventing the wide range illness that have been occurring due to the spread of these vectors. Various methods have been there to control the vectors that are broadly classified into chemical control methods, biological control, environmental management and uh, personal protective measures and finally some public awareness, creating public awareness through which the vector control could be accomplished. The first one is a chemical control method. Here using certain insecticides can be able to control the mosquitoes. Different types of insecticides may be used here depending upon the target vector's life stages. For example, residual spraying may help to curtail the population of the mosquitoes that have been mainly resting there in the walls. That is, it is targeted against the adult population of the mosquitoes. Whereas, when you are using certain insecticides that are acting as a larvicidal can able to kill the mosquito larva that could be present there in a breeding sites, mainly in a contaminated water or in the ponds. The next one is use of acaricides. It is mainly used to control the ticks as well as mite population that are associated with the transmission of the Lyme diseases and other illness. The next one is the molexicides that is mainly help to control the snails which are associated there with the passage of the pathogens mainly certain parasitic worms that causes the schizostomiasis conditions. The next one is the biological control methods for the vectors. Here introduction of certain predators there that are associated there with the vectors can be able to solve the problem. For example, if you able to introduce certain fishes there into the stagnant water bodies, they can able to successively kill the mosquito larva or that can able to eat the mosquito larva thereby the mosquito based spread of diseases could be eliminated. Say even bacteria can be used to kill there the mosquito larva that is the second one certain bacteria producing toxins say for example bacillus pericus it's an example of a bacteria that produce some potential toxin that is lethal for the mosquito larva so spreading of this particular bacterial in the water bodies can be able to reduce the vector bond population by mainly killing the larval form of the mosquitoes the next one is the environmental management methods which can be able to reduce the vector population. The first one is the source reduction. This mainly involves eliminating or modifying the breeding sites of the vector. Here the classical example is how to control the mosquito. Say if you are able to drain the stagnant water there in a particular place, the mosquito population that breeds there will be completely get reduced or clearing a brushes and piles and trees and crops can be able to eliminate the ticks which are commonly hiding on these sources. The next one is using certain improved sanitation methods that is proper waste management and sanitation practice could eliminate the availability of breeding sites for these vectors. Next comes the personal protective measures that could be best applied at individual levels. The first one is using of repellents. Applying certain insect repellent chemicals, say for example, diethyl metatolumide or other approved ingredients to a exposed skin can be able to deter the mosquitoes and ticks from biting. The next one is using insecticide treated bed nets, that is, sleeping under an insecticide treated 
bed nets will be highly effective way to prevent the mosquito bites especially this could be used there in the area that are endemic for the malarial spread the next category under the personal protective measures is using certain protective clothing as well as screening windows that is wearing long sleeved shirts and pants will be much useful during the dusk and dawn time that is the time in which the mosquitoes will be most active and they can able to bite so while you are wearing a long sleeved shirt this could be avoided a fine mesh netting with the screening of the windows could drastically reduce the mosquito attack on the people the next one is the public education that is raising awareness to the people about the vector borne diseases and their illness and what are the preventive measures that could be best used for successful control of these vectors the educational campaign can encourage people to adopt certain personal protective measures which we have listed earlier and they can improve the sanitation practices around their home for example people can avoid outdoor activities in the place that have been highly infested with the sand flies since sand flies are more active during the dawn and dusk period so people can participate in various community wide control initiatives that can able to reduce the vector population and finally we look at some points related to the integrated vector management so far we have seen a lot of methods i have listed but no single method can effectively control these vectors there comes the combination and integration of certain methods depending on the specific vector and the disease that have been spreaded the recent development of insect resistance in vector also necessitates the use of combination of control methods further community participation and sustained control efforts are essential for a long term success as well as the eradication of the vectors of various community diseases